Well, what on earth is this all about? <clears throat> good morning, good day, good afternoon. Uh, we are literally having people around the world watching us. Uh, so depending on what time, I do this every day at 12 noon Eastern time. So it's easy to remember, 12 noon Eastern time. And I am Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. So um, making a couple of adjustments on the camera. Now, I have three cameras running at the moment, and we have today, we want to welcome our visitors on YouTube. We've got about 46,000 subscribers on YouTube, and so welcome. Hey, everybody. Welcome to YouTube, uh, or welcome to me on YouTube. Uh, so, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine, and we have been doing daily broadcast <coughs> of um, art instruction videos. Uh, we have put samples on now 60, the, today will be day 63. Every day uh, we've put, been putting a brand new sample on and giving you a chance to, to look at an hour, hour and a half, two hours of a video that we've produced, oftentimes including interviews with the artist. And uh, so today we're going to be announcing what we're doing. I'm also going to talk to you about what this chart is back here. Might be a little hard to see and unfortunately on some of the cameras, it is backwards. Uh, I have I apologize to my Instagram and YouTube followers. I have not yet been uh, Mr. Technical and figured out how to get those cameras to switch. I um, I think I can just tap on this one and see what happens. No, it's not working. So uh, anyway, if anybody knows how to do that uh, on a live environment, I can do it in a recorded environment. So um, anyway, the, what's behind me is I'm going to talk today a little bit about the principles of painting skies. I also just wanted to show you something. This is not, I, I am not a very strong figurative painter or, uh, and, and strong in figurative drawing. I'm just learning. But last night I had uh, a visitor. Uh, we kept our social distance. But Ann Nelson Sweat, uh, the, the artist in Austin, Texas, came by the house here and uh, she delivered graduation gifts for the kids, which was very generous of her. She's known the kids since we moved here uh, when they were in second grade and they just graduated high school. I have triplets. Anyway, we had a chance to talk and, and so on. And she said, I got to hurry back. I said, why? And she said, well, uh, I'm going to go online with Atelier Dojo or the Austin Dojo, which is uh, an atelier here in town. And they have been doing online uh, figurative uh, drawing and painting sessions and so last night for five bucks I tuned in and I watched and I only got to do it for a few minutes and we were doing or they were doing uh, five minute poses and so uh, I just quickly sketched some five minute poses and again these are not good I was just using paint and a single color but I was trying to just get some practice because I haven't been practicing figure painting in a long time and uh, so it was kind of fun. So I would encourage you to try some of this. A lot of the schools are putting things out there. A lot of them are putting online lessons and so on. And uh, I, I would encourage you to take advantage of this time. We're trying to help you. And we're trying to help you take advantage of this time by offering you free uh, samples every day at 3 o'clock. Now those samples appear... I think I have some signs. Yes, I do. Uh, those appear at Streamline Art Video. And you can find them on uh, YouTube or on Facebook at Streamline Art Video, the page. On, and, and again, I apologize to get backwards for some of you. But uh, Streamline Art Video. And uh, I'm going to tell you something today. Those of you who are watching not on YouTube but are watching on Instagram or watching on Facebook. We have announced that we're going to pull down all of the samples that we have had out there uh, once we get through the coronavirus quarantine period of time. We are going to pull them down on May 31st. What we have decided to do is to leave them up a little longer. We've been hearing from a lot of you to leave them up a little longer. And, but here's what you need to do to get access to them. You need, don't do it right now, but make sure you do it. Um, go to YouTube and look up the account Streamline Art Video and subscribe. Hit subscribe because we're going to start pushing more things through YouTube 
and as a result, uh, that's where you're going to find them. So if you want to be able to look at the, the, the 63 different ones, and we have offered samples and we've offered discounts on those samples. And so this will give you an opportunity to see some of those. We'll keep them up there a little tiny bit longer, and we're not sure what we're going to do in the future, but that's what we're going to do now. So they're going to come down off of Facebook. Uh, they're going to come down off of every other account, but they will remain on YouTube. But you've got to be a subscriber. Hit the subscribe button. Okay, so um, a couple other things, a couple of announcements. First off, today at 3 p.m., a really, really great video. I, it seems to me I may have announced this and announced it wrong already. I probably got one of the videos wrong. Everything's kind of blending together. Uh, and I, I know that I did uh, pre-recorded announcements for our videos every day, so I may be thinking that. But uh, the very first video that we ever did, decided to get into the video game. Uh, I, the reason I did this is because I used to buy videos all the time. Uh, I bought them uh, from, mostly from Lilladol Art Instruction Video. I remember the first one that I bought was Scott Christensen. Uh, still one of the best sellers, and, and Dan Gerhardt's. And I watched those videos over and over and over again to try and learn and practice and grow. And they, they were just super, super helpful. But when I got into the business, that I decided that I wanted to know more about the artist. And so we started doing interviews with the artist. We started doing some other features to try and, and, and make it a little bit better, a little bit stronger. And so we've continued that tradition. We ended up, because uh, Johnny Lillal passed away, uh, her husband Ralph came to us and said, hey, would you take over and, and carry on the legacy? And then the same thing happened with uh, uh, Creative Catalyst Productions. Uh, so the founder, one of the founders passed away. And, and so uh, we have those three companies now streamlined. But the very first video that we ever did was the legendary Max Ginsburg. We wanted to be known for having the best of the best and having you know really, really premium um, artists. We also wanted to be known for discovering some, some artists who we think are gonna become premium. So once in a while we announce or we will launch something that we really believe in that may not necessarily have the biggest brand in the world, not a big brand like Max Ginsburg, but somebody we think you should know, somebody we think can teach you well. We're trying very hard to focus on people who are good teachers. Don't always nail it just exactly right, but we certainly try. Anyway, we, we did this video. We went to New York. We followed Max Ginsburg around the streets. We went met with his students. We did a little mini documentary. And, and then we did this. Uh, we, we also shot a video of him our first painting instruction video and quite frankly we've come a long way since then you know now we have professional cameras the same cameras they use for Hollywood the same cameras they use for national television we have uh, videographers who have worked in Hollywood national television producers and so on but back then it was just me and a guy uh, the guy was a, a young man by the name of Cameron and so we shot this video. We, we did it at the Butler Museum of Art because Max was holding a show at the Butler. So we followed him around the show and we got him talking about the paintings and he tells the stories. And I, I remember one painting, he said, see that young guy there? That was one of my students, that was Stephen Assail. And it's a painting that captures him. And this is one of the reasons that we need to have paintings of contemporary living artists uh, where uh, we are documenting them today, and that's why I'm doing the Artists and Selfie Art Competition, which uh, will get people doing self-portraits, paintings of other artists, paintings of studios, and people painting in plein air. We'll announce exactly how to get into that soon, but that's, that's coming up probably next week or this week. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we, we set up in the basement of the church that the butler owned. It was next door. And so we had to black curtain the whole thing out and, and we soundproofed it the best we could. And we're going through the video, we're shooting, all of a sudden we hear this distant rumble of drums. Ta-dum, 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 ta-dum. And it got louder and louder and closer. As it got closer, we started hearing instruments. Turns out it was game day. There was a football game right behind the building at a stadium, the university there. And the band was marching in. Here comes this 200-piece band just marching in and then the loud noise. And so we had to cut that out and obviously re redo that. But it was a wonderful memory. And 
Max is a fabulous guy. As a matter of fact, uh, we are uh, working on a new video with Max, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, but this was the very first one we've ever done, and we asked Mark, uh, we asked Max to do a portrait, and Max just makes it look so easy, and he simplifies things, and everything that you think you know about portraits, he reverses. And that was so fabulous to me because, for instance, one of the little things he talked about is painting hair. He always says, don't paint the direction of the hair. Paint the opposite direction. So if the hair is going down, you paint it sideways. And, and it was like, why? But then when you see it in place, it's like, boy, this is perfect. This works really, really well. So that's today at 3 p.m. Now, also, yesterday I announced I'm giving away two prizes uh, each worth about $650. Now we have a program we call Art Marketing in a Box. And this program is basically a done for you, complete marketing program, really designed to help you in a local community, <clears throat> help you in a local market, excuse me. <clears throat> the idea being that um, you can become a local, <clears throat> excuse me, local well-known superstar and uh, how to sell a lot of paintings locally. And, and so we have this program and it gives you email campaigns, newsletter campaigns, direct mail campaigns, uh, everything that you need, uh, social media stuff. And basically we even have the creative for you. You just drop in your paintings. Now, quite frankly, uh, that creative can be used over and over again, but changing out some images. And anyway, a lot of people are making a lot of money with it. So we're giving away two of those. We have uh, both a physical copy, which is like a $1,200 copy. We have a digital copy, which is either eight or $600. I'm not sure, six or six fifty. dollars Anyway, we're giving two digital copies away today. The first winner will be Maria Elena Lazart. Has art in her back last name, Lazart. And she lives in Maryland, so thumbs up and, and congratulations. Positive comments for Maria. Secondly, it's Joe Beth Force in Oklahoma. Each of you are getting art marketing in a box. So uh, we will be contacting you. So congratulations to you, you guys. Tomorrow's uh, prize, I'm going to give away two of these. Now, one is going to be inside the U.S. and one is going to be outside the U.S. So this is my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. Uh, first week it was out, it became an Amazon bestseller. Uh, this is the book, if you are launching your art career, uh, this is the basic foundation of everything you really need to understand. And, and the thing that we get hung up on today, by the way, the way to win is to make a comment. So make comments and then we will go through on all the Facebook, all the Instagram, and all the YouTube, and we will pull from the comments and, uh, and pick two winners, one outside of the U.S. and one inside the U.S. for my book. One of the things that happens in marketing is, is marketing is pretty complicated, really. Now, I try to dumb it down because I'm a dumbed down kind of guy. I like to have things simplified. I don't want to be overly complicated. But there are assumptions that we make that are just flat out wrong. And they're proven time and time and time again. I've been marketing for well over 30 years. I didn't know anything about this. It was all trial and error. I've built a lot of companies. I've built a lot of other people's businesses, helping them with their marketing, coaching them, selling them advertising and growing their businesses. I grew one guy. It was a, a furniture store in Salt Lake City. He had one little store, <clears throat> one little store, coached him. He bought advertising from us. He turned it into like I don't know, five or seven really, really big giant stores in, in the area. And he's probably bigger than that now. And so uh, those are the kinds of things I like to do. But the misunderstandings about marketing that we tend to get wrong are missing the basic principles. We assume because everybody's following us on Instagram or Twitter or YouTube or, 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 or Facebook or TikTok or whatever it might be, we're assuming that we can market in that environment. Now we can, but there are basic principles that have to be employed. And most of the people who are marketing are not following those basic principles. I teach the basic principles, the foundations, because let, let me give you a really good example of a basic principle. The mind has a seven day memory. 
And you, you need to get uh, an impression in the mind within that seven day memory. Now, you not only have to get one impression, you have to get roughly about seven impressions. Now, it's different in different environments. And so, you know, it doesn't always have to be a seven day memory, but it, can, it, it the idea is that you've got to get multiple impressions. Now, let's say that you're advertising uh, on uh, Realism Today, all right, one of our newsletters. If, if you get uh, one impression a week, that's a positive thing. If you get two impressions a week, that's even better. And what you want to do is look for ways to get multiple impressions. And so the way you get multiple impressions is to look for ways to hit the same audience in different ways multiple times. And it's a cumulative effect. We, there, there's, I don't have a graphic to show you, but essentially there's a curve. And this curve is, is about, let's say when you first advertise, you think, well, I'm going to buy an ad and everybody's going to come to me and then nothing happens. It's because they're not aware of you. And just because you put an ad in there, anywhere, any environment, no matter how big or how little it is, nobody buys on the very first ad, typically. Now, it's different if you're showing an ad for an event. Even that, you need repetition. But it's an announcement ad where it's an event, you know, come to this event on Thursday kind of a thing. That works a little bit differently. But the idea is you've got to keep repeating because you go from... Uh, a, a no awareness to some awareness to more awareness to higher awareness awareness to interest and once you get to interest you got to keep going now it's huh this artist might be interesting to me and then I'll keep an eye on them and then you hit them a couple more times and they're like wow I think I'd like to own this artist and then they forget so you got to keep reminding them and then they're like oh I think I'll go look at this artist's website and then they look but then they forget and then it's like, oh, I think I'll keep going. And, and, and eventually, if they're interested, they'll buy. Now, some people don't buy when you want them to buy. And that's why you always have to have presence. I, I have learned this lesson so many times in so many ways. You've got to have presence because uh, just because I want you to buy something today doesn't mean you have the time, the money, the interest, the desire. Let's say that you're, you're not buying any paintings right now, right? And, and, and yet, uh, three months from now, you inherit some money. All of a sudden, you're in the market and you're thinking, well, I, you know, I now have in mind who I want to buy because I've seen those, those repetitions of those ads. Now I know what I want. Now I'm going to go look. So, you know, they might be in the market three months or three years from now. The other thing is they might have uh, more wall space, right? Some people like move. They get a bigger house, they need more wall space, or they get an office, they need wall space. Some people downsize. There are always people in and out of the market, right? I always, in my art marketing uh, boot camp presentations, in the beginning anyway, I showed the idea of a big escalator up and a big escalator down, and that means there's always people coming into the market, always people leaving the market. Some people are downsizing. They don't have wall space anymore. Somebody got sick, somebody died, etc. So you always have to be replacing get more people on that escalator, and I teach you how to do all that stuff in, in the books and the videos and things like that. So anyway, basic principles are really important in marketing, and we just assume if we just say, hey, you know, here's my painting, it's for sale, that people are gonna buy it. Most people tell me that they're not getting great results on social media that way, even if they're paying to boost a post, which I think personally is the most silly thing to do there there are ways to do it i and i'm not anti-advertising in those places As a matter of fact i spent a lot of money in those places so um anyway um today's prize is going to be the art marketing book i want to give you a couple of reminders and then i'm going to teach you a little bit about sky painting um first off if you want to follow me personally uh you can follow me on instagram or you can follow me on facebook and my name is spelled differently than most people spell Rhodes. It's, it's R-H-O-A-D-S, and there's no E. Take the E out and put it in the front, in front of Rick, and it's Eric, all right? Eric Rhodes, okay? And uh, I can't follow you back. On, you can follow me on, on, uh, on Facebook, but I can't follow you back because I'm at my limit, but I can follow, you know, I'll follow you back on Instagram and uh, <clears throat> Eric Rhodes Publisher on Facebook. The next thing I want to remind you of is that the 31st has some deadlines. 
um, deadline for the plenary convention, uh, which is going on, will happen, will happen safely. Uh, it, it, it appears that everything's going to be cool. We've rescheduled it for Santa Fe, New Mexico in August, August 11th through 15th, and uh, it's already uh, getting big. And so, uh, and, and of course, we're having to do some things at the hotel to separate people and clean it and everything. There's a lot of stuff that has to be done. Anyway, the price goes up on May 31st, and the, right now we're at our lowest price, so you want to get that. The next thing is the Plen Air Salon uh, deadline. Uh, the Plen Air Salon art competition is on the 31st as well. We have a $15,000 cash prize plus other cash prizes, and the winners of the monthlies get entered into the annual prize to win the big money. Uh, so if you win in any category, I think there's 22 categories, if you win in any category, then you're entered into the national prize. So a lot of people enter, you know, three, four, five, six paintings, uh, and they also understand that this judge might not like me, the next one will. Uh, once you get in, you're golden, you're in the entry. But, you know, you want to get a lot of different paintings in there because, the, you know, the judging will help you the more paintings you have in there. So that's uh, plenairsalon.com. Uh, I know these are fancy graphics and I know they're backwards, so I apologize for that. I also want to remind you that I'm, I'm going to soon have all the pricing information on my special painting retreat trip to Russia, which will be September of next year, 21. We're going to St. Petersburg and Moscow, but we're going, the best part is going to the small villages and the academic Dasha, which Catherine the Great built for the artists. We're going to go and paint the exact same places where Levitan, Repin, uh, Shishkin, all the great Russian artist painted and it's perfectly safe and we have a we have good contacts there good friends there and uh, so if you want to uh, apply to be in part of that we're only taking 50 people it's going to be paintrussia.com and uh, what else I should also mention that uh, we are also continuing with the face conference the figurative art convention and expo and that is taking place in Baltimore that is a um, pretty big deal and 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 we've got some really excellent people and we have expanded it so it's not just bigger in portrait now we've added it's mostly that but we've added uh, other disciplines like still life like landscape uh, and so on so that you have a little bit of variety and so that's taking place in Baltimore October 29th we're gonna have a big Halloween party and I will tell you that other two events that are going on we rescheduled the Adirondack Publishers Retreat called the Publishers Invitational. We rescheduled it for July 28th through August 4th, and it's in the Adirondacks. And there's an announcement going out today, so you're probably the first to hear about it. Uh, this is the 10-year anniversary, and I've been trying to get some really, really special stuff going on for the 10-year anniversary, and we pulled it off. Didn't think we could pull it off, but because of coronavirus, and because the Paul Smith College has decided they're not going to open up this year at all. We were able to get into one of the great camps. Now, they're, historically, there are what's called the great camps of the Adirondacks, which were built by the big barons back in the Gilded Age. And, you know, the place we're going at, in, in 1904 cost $2.5 million to build. It's $70 million in today's dollars. If you can imagine, it's like 40,000 square feet. And... It's a great camp. Uh, it was owned by the Loeb family, before that another family, and now it's a kid's camp, but it's an old great camp, and it sits on Saranac Lake, not the town of Saranac Lake, the beautiful Saranac Lake, which is one of the biggest and most beautiful lakes. So our scenery is going to change. We have a, a boathouse that we have access to. We have boats that we have access to. We have uh, 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 incredible spaces, and we have some really big dorms and everybody's going to be able to be separated in these big dorms and it is going to be phenomenal i mean this is probably the only time we'll ever be able to do one in the month of july late july early august which is the prettiest time because usually the facilities are booked up because that's peak season and usually the kids camp is booked up because it's peak season and then there's normally 500 kids in this camp we will be basically just about a hundred of us and we'll have the whole place to ourselves. nobody else there, and it's gonna be fabulous. The painting, just the painting from the boathouse alone is spectacular.
spectacular. So this is a big deal. Now, I've also worked on some special things. Uh, we have made arrangements to go to Rockwell Kent's farm. Rockwell Kent was a very famous illustrator and painter. Uh, he lived on one of the most beautiful farms in America. The scenery of this farm is magnificent. It's got the barn with the layers of mountains behind it. And we've managed to get a full day at Rockwell Kent's farm and get to go see his studio and paint there. That's one of the things that we've got. Now, we also are working on another great camp. And these things are private, and we're not sure we're going to be able to get in, but I have been dialoguing with them, and we're working on that. So this is the year, if you've ever never come, or if you've been before and you want to come back, this is the year to come or to come back. And we go painting every day, all day. We feed you three meals a day. We, you know, you roll out of bed. You don't have to do anything to show up for food. And then we go paint. We have uh, what we call easy painting, roadside access for people who don't want to climb down little ravines and so on. And then the rest of us will go down the rocks to the waterfalls and so on. But there's beautiful places no matter where we go. And because we're in a little slightly different area, about 12 minutes from where we stayed before, we've got a whole new world of some other beautiful things nearby. So that's going to be kind of fun. And so we got a lot going on. Now, this is going to be a little hard to see because my whiteboard is glass. And also, uh, the cameras can't zoom in because they're fixed. But I want to talk to you about cloud painting. I, I, not cloud painting, sky painting. The, the one thing to understand is that I am uh, still uh, somewhat of an amateur painter. I, I teach painting to beginners. Um, I have some basic principles in my head. There are people who know this a lot better than I do. But I want to share some things that I've learned about cloud painting. And this was suggested by one of you in the comments yesterday, and so I thought I'd do that today. Now, I'm going to step to the side, and again, this is backwards, but you'll understand the principles. So imagine this is a landscape, and this is your horizon line, and, you know, you've got your foreground and your horizon line. And let's say it's a sunny day, and the sun is here, right here. This represents the sun. So when you're painting skies you have a gradation and you have two different gradations you have a gradation from here to here and you have a gradation from here out now depending on where the sun is if the sun is here you have a gradation going this direction and so the gradations go through uh, different things you're, you're talking about value value is darks and lights hue which is um, the the uh, how do I explain that? Somebody jump in and help me here. And, and, then, and then there's chroma. And, and chroma is the brilliance. Uh, hue is the color. Chroma is the brilliance of the color. And so when you're painting, uh, if you've got the sun here, if you're looking towards the sun, now this doesn't apply if you're looking the other direction. If you're looking the other direction, you still have gradation, but you don't have essentially warms and cools as much. So if you're looking towards the sun, what's going to happen is this is going to be your warmest uh, spot. And it tends to be a little warmer and yellower or greener. And then it, it's warm, gets a little cooler, a, a little, little cooler, a little cooler, and a lot, lot cooler, and a lot darker. So, and the same principle happens over here. Now, the further away from the sun, it gets cooler and darker. So when I'm painting a sky, I'm using uh, oftentimes cobalt blue, uh, ultramarine blue, and cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is a really warm color. Of course, you can warm up any blue uh, with, with some, some yellow or some green. And so uh, up in this area, it's first off, it's brighter, right? Because the sun is over there. So in your sky, it's going to be brighter, lighter, and warmer and then as it gets away it's going to get a little less bright a little less warm this is still really warm in here and then gets really cool on the other side it gets really really cool so this is going to be like cerulean blue getting darker darker warmer and warmer this is going to be like cerulean blue in here and then you're going to go into either your cobalt and, and then your ultramarine ultramarine works in, in my opinion works best 
when uh, you're looking the other direction. When If you turn around, this way you're looking at the sun. If you turn around and look the other direction, the sky tends to be deeper and bluer and gives you an opportunity to, to really make the sky much cooler. Now the other thing that happens is uh, going from the bottom to the top, it typically is lighter. Now, observation is your friend. You want to paint what you see, although some people say paint what you know. Um, and there's a whole other discussion about that. But typically, the atmosphere down here at the horizon has more air particle or more water particles in the air and there's more dust in the air, so it gets a little grayer, a little purpler, or sometimes a little alizarin crimson. And so you're mixing into your blues or your whites a little bit of alizarin, and then it's and you're gradiating up uh, to uh, darker and darker and darker and darker. And, and you need to assume the sky is going over you like a bubble, so think of it as going this way. So it's getting darker the higher it gets. So the other thing is when you're painting clouds, when you're looking into the sun, the clouds tend to be silhouetted, right? So if there's a cloud, the sun is coming behind it. So you're going to get light on the top, sometimes on the sides of the clouds, and the cloud is going to be much darker. And yet if you're, and of course, if it's a thunder cloud or something, it's going to be darker still. Now I'm only using one color here. It's not going to be that dark. But the centers tend to be dark, and the edges and the tops tend to be lighter. And if you're painting the other direction, it's completely different from this. It's a lot more, a lot less contrasty. So anyway, when you're painting your skies, you want to think about this. First off, a lot of us, when we begin, and I was this way, we, we tend to make our skies just very even and very consistent. And... Um, uh, skies have a lot of color variations in them, so uh, you might try some, uh, you know, Edgar Payne used to use pinks and blues and create this vibrational effect, and, and you can create vibrational effects. The other thing is to keep in mind that not all skies are blue. I mean, if you, you've got to look at the sky, I'm looking at the sky right now, and first off, the value is really bright, it's white, it's got maybe, uh, maybe a tinge of gray in it, not much. And so uh, obviously you can't see it right now. But the idea is that uh, you want to observe. You know, Daniel Sprick uh, does a lot of yellow skies. And others do green skies. You know, there's just, you can make a sky any color you want. Um, uh, there's a painter by the name of Randall Sexton. I, I, don't, I have one of his paintings here, but I don't have one with sky in it. But Randall uses a color called horizon blue, which is greener. Now you can also create that greener effect by putting, taking a blue, a cobalt, or, or maybe an ultramarine cobalt with some white and, and a little bit of viridian, and, and you can create that same effect. It's kind of a, a warm color. And you can, of course, put that up here in the warmth and then push it out. So, um, and so just as a reminder, you know, darker, lighter, cooler, warmer, uh, depending on where the sky is. Now, what Joe McGurl taught me is that he, he usually doesn't show the sun. He will put it off to the side. And so you see, but you get the variation. You get the warmth and then moving towards the cool. And I never used to do that. And that changed everything for me. It was really important to understand that. And so once that changed, it just all came alive. I like to get a little vibration in my skies. I've got a painting that I have to get uh, done this week for the Laguna Plein Air Painters. I was in their, uh, in their fundraising effort and they sent me a little canvas I gotta paint it. So I'll probably do some sky and whatever it is I'm gonna paint and you'll get a little vibration and variation in that. I would love your thoughts. A lot of you are more experienced than I am. A lot of you have different opinions and if you have opinions, put them in the comments. Put ideas on painting skies in the comments because uh, and I can't see the comments right now because I'm kind of far away from the cameras. But the idea is that um, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. There's never a right or wrong. And what David LaFell says is paint what you know, not necessarily what you see. And I'll probably get criticized for this because other people say the opposite of that. But what basically he's saying is that you know that certain principles are effective and like you might be seeing a cool shadow. His 
uh, my understanding of his belief is you always want that shadow to be warm. Now, others will say, no, if it's a warm sky, it's a cool shadow, and if it's a cool sky, it's a warm shadow. Uh, so everybody's got their opinions. There's not necessarily right or wrong. It's what works for you. And of course, the old masters, Rembrandt era masters, everything was brown. You know, we didn't even have colors like ultramarine back then. I did a podcast yesterday with Pierre G uh, Gidetti from Sennelier, and he was talking about the Impressionists and when the colors were invented, how these modern colors came about. And so back in Rembrandt's day, they had a lot of earth colors. They didn't have a whole lot more. So make sure you put your comments on skies in there and make sure that you put a comment so that you can potentially win the, one of the two art marketing books uh, that we're giving away today. And also, uh, if you are from outside of the United States, please put that in there. We will check the replays and the lives, and we will tomorrow announce the winner. Now, I want to tell you also, uh, on May 31st, we, that's the last day for you to enter to win. We have a painting that's worth almost $3,000 the, from, from the incredible artist Joseph McGurl. And uh, that is just a, a, a beautiful little painting, and you want to try and win that. And, and uh, I, you know, I, I used to be in radio, and, I, um, and I, before I got into radio, I was one of those guys who said, I'll never enter a contest because I'll never win. When I got into radio, I realized that's not true. A lot of people win randomly, and a lot of people who think they're not going to win end up winning. They always say, oh, I didn't think I'd ever win. So uh, enter, and, uh, enter the painting of Joe McGurl. Also... Coming around June 1st, which is probably when we're going to announce the winner, winner of the Joseph McGurl painting, we also are probably going to do something pretty big on June 1st. This is our celebration that our quarantine period is kind of over. Uh, we, we will continue doing this as long as we need to, uh, to make sure that we're there to support you and keep you uplifted, keep your head in the right place, keep your spirits high. But in the meantime, uh, we are at some point going to give away your choice, a full registration to either the Plen Air Convention, uh, which is in August, or the Figurative Art Convention and Expo, which is in Baltimore in late October. And so uh, uh, we will be telling you how to do that. It's, we're not exactly sure when, but keep tuning in every day. Uh, for those of you on YouTube, I just started doing this on YouTube. Today's the first day, so keep tuning in if you will. And we'll try to keep you updated about what's happening today. Remember, today at 3 p.m., we have uh, Le uh, The Legacy of an American Painter, which is a combination of documentary and teaching with Max Ginsburg. So I don't know uh, what segment our producers have picked. Uh, Bryant, our producer, has been working 8 to 10 hours a day. Thumbs up for Bryant. Uh, has been working on these videos and, and, the, and the team, the rest of the team has been working. Nobody's had any days off. We're actually working harder now. <laughs> you know, we're pedaling faster to, to try and stay close to where we were before. We're a small business. We rely on you guys. These daily videos not only help you keep your head in the game or giving you some discounts, which we, we're kind of like Nordstrom's. We just never give discounts, so this is a very rare time. Uh, if you've got something that you think you might want, we're not trying to trick you into anything. We're giving you samples that we would normally sell, but this is a time, if you want the rest of the video, a good time to get it. It helps the artists and it helps us. I, I signed a lot of checks to a lot of artists because a lot of you have been buying videos, so this is really helpful to them. So uh, anything that you can do to help would be great. Uh, remember that we'd love to hear your comments on the Painting Skies. Uh, I go through every comment, but other people are trading information and it's really fun to see the community developing. And we've had uh, well over, I think on day 29, I haven't seen the latest stats, but on day 29, we had over uh, 1.5 million views of the daily videos, 59,000 people average per day. That's just very cool. Uh, so congratulations on that. Thank you for your support and being there for us. And um, we'll continue to put this out there while we can. And in the meantime, we're trying to get back to work and get things moving, moving along. And, and I'm here in Austin, Texas, and things are starting to move along here. And so far, nobody's getting, getting sick. Uh, at least we're not seeing anything. So fingers crossed. I'm kind of staying home, and, and I work from home anyway, so it's not a big deal for me. So uh, 
I think that's all. I'm going to go up to the comments real quickly and just read a couple of comments. Um, it's kind of hard to watch them as they're all going by. All these events uh, sound super awesome, says Zandia, uh, Zenobia Shanks. They are super awesome. We, we really put a lot into them. Somebody sent me a note the other day and, and said that uh, our conferences are beyond comprehension. And you don't know it until you go, but we really put a lot into them. We have typically, we have four or five stages. We have big stages with big screens so that you can see every detail of the paintings. We've got some of the best painters in the world uh, at all of these conferences. If you go to the websites, plenairconvention.com or figurativeartconvention.com, you can see who the, the people are. But we've, we have amazing, amazing faculty members this year. We also have pre-convention workshops this year at Plein Air Convention, we have a Kevin McPherson pre-convention workshop. At the Figurative Art Convention and Expo, we have two. We have a painting workshop with Tony Ryder, uh, which is a really good get. And, and we also have another really good get with the Juliet Aristides, who's going to be teaching drawing. What a great way to refine your skills. And then we have, in both cases, we have what we call practice what you've learned. And that is, uh, every day at the Plein Air Convention, uh, we go out and we all paint together and it's kind of fun. You know, last year I remember at the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, there's a thousand of us painting together. It is so cool to see and everybody's got different things. And we have instructors going around, we call them field painters, are going around and they're teaching people and giving them advice and, and helping them. And at the, at the Figurative Art Convention and Expo, we have a giant studio, we have a ballroom and there's like 10, 12 models in that ballroom. They're live, some are clothed, some are not clothed, and you can paint with models. Now that's an option for you. Uh, we have to charge a little bit for that because we have to pay the models and we have to pay for the extra space. But the idea is learn something and go practice it right away so it gets cemented into your head. We think that's pretty important. So yeah, they're pretty cool events and thank you for that. I'm checking out, uh, ha, here's Georgette Sinclair. It says, hi Eric. Georgette came to the Publishers Invitational one time. Uh, let's see if I can see here. Kevin McPherson, yay, says Debbie Moore, fine art. Would love to do pace, getting info, uh, getting into portraits and love it. You should do face. Face is, face is figurative art if you're doing portraits. By the way, I should mention that um, we had about, last year at the Figurative Art Convention, about 80 people came from the Plein Air Convention because they've learned that painting portraits is part of becoming better at Plein Air. And portrait painters need to understand that in Russia, in the training system, if you're studying uh, portraiture or figurative, you have to do Plein Air. And that's why I'm into these two things. I'm into very much the Plein Air movement and very much the realism movement and trying to boost both of those. I talked the other day about this museum I plan to build and raising money for and this TV show that we're raising money for. And so lots going on. We're trying to give you stuff to do, trying to get you engaged, keep you happy. And so thank you for, for watching today. Dave Doherty is watching. Hey Dave, I'd bring you on camera, but I, I can't put you on the other cameras uh, because uh, you're not, you wouldn't be on YouTube or on Instagram. I gotta figure that out. Uh, thank you for the great diversion, says Sam. Sherry Maxwell says, would love to own one of your great books. Well, I hope you will win it. But if you don't win it, you can go to Amazon and get it, of course. And let's see here. Well, anybody on YouTube? A lot of people. 40, 4,344 people on YouTube. Wow. You guys are awesome. If you want to make some comments in there, that'd be great. Uh, in Kansas, the horizon sky color is very dirty yellow, then fades to light cerulean, then cobalt. We have some of the best, I can't see the rest of it, it says Seymour. Uh, but that's true, every area, best sunsets in the world. You know, particles, water particles and dust particles make for some incredible sunsets. You know, they talk about the golden light in California. Uh, part of the reason that light is so golden is because each one of those little water particles coming off the ocean with that salt in it is getting hit and, and refracting and, and the sun is just, everything's golden. And uh, of course we have what's called the golden hour. Most of you know this, but there are a lot of new painters out there who might not. The golden hour is typically, you know, 10, 15 minutes before sunset and, uh, you know, right after sunrise. And so what a lot of us do 
we go in and we kind of get the basics of our painting done, get certain things done, and then we wait for that golden light. And then we look down, we mix those colors, we slap them in just so that we can capture it. And, and you don't have a lot of time. But some of the best paintings that I've ever done are paintings that were done in 15 minutes. Because we, when we have a lot of time, we tend to overthink things and overdo things. But when you got 15 minutes, I, I remember I was telling somebody on my plein air podcast the other day, I was standing out, uh, we, we were camping as a family. I have uh, triplets, we went camping. We lived in California at the time. And uh, I saw that it was getting to be late afternoon. I said to my wife, I'd like to go paint for a few minutes. And so I literally went over to the seashore, which was across the street, where there's a lighthouse. And I set my easel up and it's doing this because the wind is blowing hard and the sun's going down and the, the lighthouse is glowing. And I literally am holding my easel and it's shaking like this and I'm taking my brush and I'm trying to just lay in those colors. And I was so distracted, I didn't have time to think. I just do a big, bold brush strokes. I like that. Big, bold brush strokes. And, and I, I, it turned out to be one of the most magnificent paintings I've ever done. I'll never sell it. I don't sell my studies anyway because I like to keep them. I have them all around the room here in my studio and, and I like to keep them because they're my memories. I'll take them and make paintings from them and send them to the gallery, Castle Gallery in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But the idea is that uh, when you don't have time to think, sometimes you use instinct and instinct can be the best. If you're learning plein air painting, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from Kevin Corder who helped me kind of inspire get to this magazine going. I didn't even know he was doing that. And that is that um, uh, you do a hundred small paintings. You know, you get a lot of small canvases and you just get out and you get used to using the paint, being outdoors, and, and you get better over time. So the more paintings you can do, the better off you're gonna be. Anyway, I will just go back to the comments real quickly. And if anybody has any opinions, Quotes from the Cloud Spotter, we pledge to fight blue sky. I don't know if I can get back to it. And uh, thinking wherever we find it, life would be dull if we had to look up at cloudless monotony day after day. That's so true. Uh, instinct can be the best, says Steve. Uh, let's see, same here, love studies. Hi, Eric, off work today. So in the studio painting and watching you, thanks. Hey, I know everybody's got to get back to work, and so congratulations on being off. Northampton, UK. <whistles> Glad you're here. Uh, same here, love my studies. Mar 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 Marcia Raff says, great, Eric, inspiring for sure. Marcia is a fabulous sculptor. Uh, I've been learning so much from your talks and love the art videos. Good, congratulations. We are happy to do it. Small painting is the trick for learning fast, says Steve. And uh, so you guys are rock stars for being here every day. I've had 63 days, no day off in between, and I am energized. I feel great. I'm happy to do this. I, I look forward to this every day. It's going to be a sad day when this ends. I mean, I, I don't know. Would, would, you, would you like it to continue? If it, if, would you be home? If, you know, give me a thumbs up if you think maybe we should continue this. You're probably sick of seeing me by now. But uh, anyway, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, we don't know what the future holds. I'm going back to the comments. Space launch at 2. Oh, that's right. Uh, does, glad it doesn't conflict with our 3 p.m. video. I got to watch that. Put that in your calendars today. Space launch. I don't know if I'll be able to see it from Austin, Texas. It's, uh, it's probably not visible. Maybe at some point. Well, I used to live in Florida. I used to watch the space launches all the time. So... Lots of thumbs up, lots of absolutely love the time. Yes, continue. I've never met anyone like you before. I know my wife says that too. You're crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, continue. Yes, please continue. Yes, keep it up. Oh, you guys are really sweet. Um, keep it going. All right. Well, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Trevor on my team to get, bring in a big screen TV and, and we're looking at software that'll put all the comments in one place so I can stand back here and read them and, rather than having to get up close because I have to see them pretty close. Okay, well, anyway, you guys have been awesome. I remind you today, Max Ginsberg is a legend, and this guy can paint. I own uh, one of his paintings. I showed it very early on. It's a study he did for one of his great paintings. He is a legend, and you're going to enjoy that today at 3 
Remember, tomorrow I've got art marketing books uh, that I'm going to give away. And congrats to Maria and Joe Beth in Oklahoma and in Maryland for winning the $650 prizes. Remember to keep coming back. One day we're going to give away a full registration to either plein air convention or figurative art convention and expo. When you think about this, you know, if you go to a workshop, now the things that you spend money on is you go to a workshop, you're spending money on air and hotel, and that's for everything. But then you're paying for a workshop and you get a single instructor and you get there and sometimes you love that instructor and sometimes you don't, usually you do. And workshops are very valuable. The plein air convention, the figurative art convention, about the same amount of money, if you catch it early enough, about the same amount of money as a workshop and you get to sample at the plein air convention, we, we probably have a total of right now 60, 70, 80 uh, painters on, on uh, not all of them are on stage, some of them are out there working in the field with you, but you get to go from painter to painter to painter to painter. We have watercolor, we have acrylic, we have pastel, we have oil, and you get to sample these people. And the people that are on stage always say, you know, I ended up selling out my workshop because all these people liked what I did. And so this it's good for them, it's, it's good for you. And the same thing with the Figurative Art Convention and Expo. We try to do it differently. You know, we're kind of a high energy group of people. I will make a complete fool of myself. I'll get on stage and, and we'll crank the music up and we'll get everybody in the audience just jiving around. And, you know, there's always somebody sitting in the back going, like, I don't like this. And uh, I'll tell you, I went to a Tony Robbins event one time and everybody's doing this, right? And everybody's jumping around and being crazy and the music is jamming and I'm sitting there like this. And, and I looked around and I'm the only one. And I'm thinking, I am not going to get into this. I am not that kind of guy. I'm a just quiet, conservative. And, and I sat there and I sat there and I, I was about a day of going like this. And I felt just so out of place. Then I thought, I wonder what would happen if I just bought into it. What if I were to just start doing this, right? And... <laughs> And so I did, and a, a, a remarkable thing happened. I, I, I was having more fun. I started learning. I didn't care what other people thought because everybody else was doing it. And my neighbors around me started paying more attention to me because they thought, okay, he's into it. And so I made a lot of friends. And so, you know, if you come and we're just jumping around and we're cranking up the hits and we're, we're having fun, just know that we're trying to get you out of your comfort zone because your comfort zone is what suppresses you. It's what hold you down, holds you down. If you get out of your comfort zone, you will thrive. You will grow. You know, you've got to try new things because you don't want to stay the same, right? What do they say? You can either be stagnant water, you know, a pond with algae growing on it and lots of bugs, or you can be a waterfall, right? And to be a waterfall, you got to get out of your comfort zone. And that's why I'm here. My job in life, I got a few missions. One is to get you out of your comfort zone, to teach you, to help you grow, to become better artists, to entertain you with uh, educational articles, things to help you grow, things to help you learn. And to also, to my, my other big goal in life is to teach you how to not be a starving artist because the whole idea of starving as an artist is a turnoff to me. And I just think that this we, we have this thing about Van Gogh and oh the romance of Van Gogh and he was a starving artist. By the way, I learned yesterday that the uh, first Cad Yellow came out from a company called Sennelier, at least they claim that, and that's the first color that went in the sunflowers when they first came out with it. So not only was Van Gogh standing out, he was using bold, bright colors that were brand new. But the idea of being a starving artist like Van Gogh and selling maybe one, maybe two paintings in your lifetime that we're aware of, and then, you know, never being famous, I, 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 it's not necessarily about being famous, but it's about freedom, right? The, the freedom to do what you want to do, have enough money to get what you want to get, do the traveling you want to do, you know, not have to be holden to, to somebody else. And so I have made it my goal to eliminate the idea of starving artists. And so I'm putting all my resources into trying to train you. I've got artmarketing.com. There's tons of articles there that are free. 
I've got a video training series. There's a webinar if you look for it. Uh, it's called Survival, uh, Thrive and Survive in COVID Times. That's the essential things you need to do. I've got a webinar uh, that you can, you can search and find or find it on, scroll down on one of our pages, you'll find it. I, I'm trying to do things to get you out of your comfort zone. If you want to sell your art, then you should be able to thrive. And that's the goal. Now, if you don't want to sell your art, your art, there's no pressure. I'm not trying to turn you into a professional artist if you don't want to be. I do a little bit of it, tiny bit. Uh, you know, for me, paintings are scarcity, right? I can produce uh, one or two big landscape paintings a year, tops. A lot of you can do a lot more, but I'm running a business, I'm working full time, I've got a, a family, I'm trying to get off to college. Yeah, I'll have more time soon. But the idea is I don't paint a lot and so I'm not trying to be a professional full-time artist all the time, but I learn a lot from doing it, doing selling a couple paintings a year, quite frankly. And Jody at Castle Gallery has been really great. By the way, Jody, if you're watching, I owe you a phone call. I saw you called yesterday. She's trying to get me to buy a house and move back to Fort Wayne, Indiana. I know she is because she sent me a picture of a house. Anyway, that might be kind of fun. So um, I'm done. I've been rambling, and I hope you will work on your growth today. Work on uh, getting better, uh, keep your head in the game, try to lift your spirits. Uh, you know, as soon as you turn this off, I want you to do two things. I want you to go to YouTube and look up Streamline Art Video and hit subscribe. That way you can make sure you're getting the, the library of videos for a while. Number two, I want you to go to paintinggiveaway.com and enter to win that painting. And then when you're done with those two assignments, I want you to go into your, your private space Crank up the tunes, crank up something upbeat, and just be silly. You know, I'll be in here, my wife will walk in and she'll, you know, she's got me, I'm out there, I'm painting, and uh, she'll walk in and she'll just sit there and go. And, of course, I'm embarrassed, but I, I like to make a fool of myself. I would, I would do that right now if I had something nearby. I mean, all I got is my, my beautiful little face mask. All right, have a great day. We'll see you. Bye-bye. I see I'm, oh, wow, we're up to 5,700 on YouTube. See you guys. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. If I can figure out.